Akron Athletics presents Zips Weekly with John Gross. Sponsored by Bryant Heating and Cooling. And Hilton Hotels in Akron and Fairlawn. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a brand new season of Zips Weekly with head basketball coach John Gross. If you're a University of Akron basketball fan, you want to be with us each week as we update you on what's happening with the Zip basketball program. And what's happening right now? Akron getting ready to play Mid American Conference basketball. They open up Tuesday night out at Northern Illinois, then back home Friday night to take on Bowling Green. Quick reminder that Bowling Green game will tip off at 9 o'clock. Coach, right now as we sit here ready to play uh, Mid-American Conference basketball, we are 8-4, and four, but boy, that is so misleading. Uh, Two-point loss to Utah State, two-point loss to UNLV, one-point loss to St. Bonaventure. You, you hate to play the what-if game, but boy, yeah. those are three tough well, losses. Well, I think it all balances itself yeah. out, right? South Dakota State, we're down seven points at yeah. the under four and find a way to win the game. You know, Gardner-Webb, we're down three late in the game. Sammy Hunter makes a big three. Yeah. We pull out the game in overtime after a missed layup. You know, Northern Kentucky, we run the full court play. Freeman gets the dunk uh, to win the game. So we've been in a lot of tight games. I think it'll, you know, help us as we get yeah. ready to start season two, Mid-American Conference play, as you mentioned, and uh, something to build on for sure. We're still trying to find our rhythm a little bit. I mean, the reality of it is we didn't have Ali for the first eight games. Right. And uh, that changed our rotation some. So we're still trying to figure out that. Uh, to some degree, which is a little bit unique and something we hadn't necessarily planned on with an older team at this yeah. point heading into January. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I do think we're getting better in a lot of areas. I thought our defense took a really yeah. good step against St. Bonaventure, and uh, we just got to continue to build and take it one day at a time. Okay, let's go back and uh, take a look at some of the highlights from the November games. And it all started, if you remember, out at South Dakota State. Seems like a long time ago. We took on the Summit League favorites coach, and that was a tough environment to play in. Oh, phenomenal environment. Uh, one of the best home court advantages in all of college basketball. Uh, our guys did a great job of just kind of staying with it. Uh, we got, you know, obviously we were, as I mentioned, down at the under four and found the way to, you know, figure it out, make some big plays down the stretch. There you see Nate finishing in and around the rim. Um, Freeman had a great game. I thought Dawson's return was timely. He made some big shots that uh, spurred us on to the win. Zips were down by 17 to 10, 22 15, came back and won that one. Then they come back to take on Southern Miss. That was in the MAC Sun Belt Challenge. That was a heck of a game. Unbelievable game. And really the score was misleading in that one, too, Joe. Yeah. We talk about close games. I believe we went on a 17 to nothing run to end the game. Right. Uh, but up until that point, it was nip and tuck, a lot of lead changes, a lot of ties, a really tight, close, closely contested game. And uh, we found a way to pull away at the end and make some plays. Uh, but, yeah, very good win for us against a very good team. Of course, the, uh, the Max Sunbelt Challenge has one more game left. We're not sure who will play, Coach, but it will be a tough one. You know that. Yeah, it'll be another great game, right? We've had a heck of a non-conference schedule. We, we put that in play intentionally. I uh, thought it would be great for our team and, and uh, allow us to grow and accelerate our growth more by playing that type of schedule with an older team. That's Nate uh, Johnson with the breakaway dunk. And the Zips win this one. Close, but the Zips get their second win of the season. Now you bring Heidelberg in, Coach. I think that game was back on November 14th, and uh, another win. Yeah, obviously, got and got a chance to play a lot of guys in that one, which was important. You know, unfortunately, we haven't had the opportunity to do that a lot because of the schedule that we played, um, the quality of the teams that we played, how many games we played on road and neutral sites uh, has made it even more challenging uh, as we play less home games this year uh, since they went to the 31 game regular season schedule with the NCAA than at any point in the Division I era at the University of Akron. So, you know, we, we, uh, we've really challenged them. Uh, again, only playing five home games in totality here through the 13 non-conference games that we'll eventually play once we finish that last Sun Belt Challenge game. But, but uh, yeah, no, it was good to be able to do that in that one against Heidelberg. And then we go to the Caymans, right? Caymans were three games beginning with Florida International. A different style. Man, was that wild. And uh, Akron fans uh, will probably remember the name Shaka Smart, who was a one-time assistant oh, yeah. here, and how he played at VCU with the Havoc Press. His uh, assistant, Jeremy Ballard, is the head coach at Florida International now, and uh, they did the same thing. 
uh, and it was just total chaos for 40 minutes. It really challenged us. Full court pressure, trapping, running, jumping. You had to make plays. Then we get to the Utah State game, and I don't think any of us knew, Joe, how good Utah State was going to be. They've got one loss right now. Uh, they're top 50 in the net. On paper, they're the best team that we've played. Uh, they were also very old, very physical, a little bit like St. Bonaventure was here uh, recently. So it was, uh, it was a great game. It came down to the end. They made a couple more plays than we did. We had a key turnover late in the game yeah. uh, that didn't give us a chance to have that last offensive possession. You know, against that uh, Utah State team, we had a chance late to pick up a ball and go down and maybe tie it or win. Yeah, that was the play I was talking about. You're 100% correct. Uh, we just, you know, turned it over, unfortunately, and didn't give us ourselves a chance to have that last offensive possession to win it. Then you take on uh, Drake, seeing the highlights there, and they were a good team. I'm not sure if we were still a little bit down from that tough Utah State loss, but uh, I know you were kind of disappointed in that one. Yeah, this it was probably the game of the ones we played thus far out of the 12 that I was the most disappointed in. Uh, and obviously it was uh, untimely because Drake, I would say in my opinion, you know, we played a really great schedule. Drake and St. Bonaventure are probably the two best teams we've played. And um, we just, we didn't play very well in the Drake game and they played great. They've got a really good team, uh, a team that has a chance to win the Missouri Valley and, uh, and took it to us pretty good. Then the Zips traveled out to Las Vegas in late November to take on the running Rebels. And one of the great comebacks in Zips are going to have this year. We're down big, Coach, and all of a sudden we just catch fire in the second half. Yeah, we did, and we kept playing and kept swinging, got down double figures. This team has such great character, and they play so hard, and, and uh, you know, there's no quit in our guys. And I think people have seen that on numerous, you know, numerous occasions with this crew. Um, so you're never out of it. And we came back from double figures, had the – a possession there, and unlike the Utah State game, Joe, we had an offensive possession That's right. to try to win the game there at UNLV, and we got downhill with Tribble down the left lane line right at the rim, and and uh, we just didn't. There's a steal by Nate Johnson here in the comeback, but but yeah, we just didn't uh, execute real well on that last possession, didn't get a great yeah. shot. Dawson got a bomb right. uh, that didn't go our way, but uh, I thought we really competed. Oh, you're down 16 points, Coach, with about 14 minutes left. Everybody thinking it's over, and all of a sudden, here you come. That, that was fun to watch. No, it was, and it just, again, shows our ability to, you know, really just kind of keep swinging and mental toughness, our d ability to handle adversity yeah. throughout the game uh, and stay with it, which I would expect that from our from sure. older team and, and the guys that we have in our locker room that have won a lot of games. They have a lot of belief. Yep. Well, the Zips finished the November schedule, the record of four and three. We're going to take a break, come back, and take a look at the highlights from December right after this on Zips Weekly. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly as we talk basketball with head coach John Gross. Uh, take a look at some of the December games, coach. I guess the biggest thing in December, we got Ali Ali back. Yeah, no, that was obviously, right, a real blessing for us. Um, and uh, you look at some of the games that we've won here recently and the tight games that we've been in. Uh, certainly our team's, you know, done a great job with all that. But he's been helpful, obviously, watching it. It's uh, given us a little bit different dimension when you have – you know, a six foot eight guard is yeah. basically what he is. So it allows you to do some different things, both offensively and defensively, and has uh, added a lot of value oh, yeah. to our team. Right now, let's get into the December highlights. The Bradley Braves come to town, Coach. I remember a year ago out in Peoria with a snowstorm, and that left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. It was good to get in and get a win. Yeah, it was. Obviously, our guys remembered that. We brought it up quite frequently in the prep leading into the game. And it was an interesting game because uh, one of their better players, Connor Hickman, did not play. And obviously one of our better players, Ali Ali, did not play. 
So I think, you know, you saw a Bradley team and an Akron team um, that, you know, were, you know, not necessarily all whole, uh, but it was a great game. Um, it really was. And they're, and they're good. You know, if they, once they get Hickman back from injury, you know, there'll be a team right there that was picked alongside Drake, as we yeah. mentioned earlier, to win the Missouri Valley. Um, very good basketball team, very well coached. And uh, Malivi Leons, I really got a lot of respect for him defensively. You know, I, I love guys who guard, and uh, he's a great defender, was the Missouri Valley Defensive Player of the Year last year. Good guard play with Dean. But we made some plays. There you see Caleb making a play there at the rim and Reek tipping it in for a dunk. Um, you know, it was a great win for us at home. Now you go down to Northern Kentucky, Coach. You got Ali, Ali back, and I thought you played maybe your best game in two halves down there against Northern Kentucky. What an unbelievable game. I thought both teams offensively were absolutely terrific. High-level basketball game uh, against a really good team. You know, unfortunately for them, since we've played them, you know, Sam Vincent, of course, who you remember, Joe, from sure. watching their, their backcourt of Vincent and Warwick, I think a lot of people felt like was going to be the best in the Horizon League. Well, Vincent, uh, God bless him, and we wish him a speedy recovery towards ACL yeah. after our game. So he's out, and, uh, you know, again, wishing him a speedy recovery and the best uh, for those guys. Darren does a really good job. But uh, we played, man, we, we stepped up, made big shots, made big plays. Uh, none bigger than the last one, right, Joe? Oh, I still can't believe watch, it didn't it? make Sports Center. I know uh, <laughs> Brian Dennison and our crew in that department did everything they could to try to get it on there. Um, I can't imagine, you know, ten better plays that night than that than the last dunk there to win the game that you're watching there on the uh, on the edit. I'll tell you, Enrique Freeman uh, got the pass from Ali and just went over top of everybody for that dunk and. The Zips win maybe their best road win in a while down at uh, Northern Kentucky. Well, South Dakota State's up there, too. I mean, yeah. They'd only had like five home losses in five years, you know. So we've had a couple really, really good road wins uh, in both South Dakota State uh, and Northern Kentucky. November 17th, Miami Hamilton comes in just before finals week, Coach, and uh, win that one 88-34. to 34. Yeah, a little bit like the Heidelberg game. It was uh, the one of two games that we've played where we did have a chance to play more guys yeah. uh, deep in our rotation a little bit. It's important to have those type of games uh, for those guys that we're trying to figure out rotationally. I feel bad a little bit. The schedule's been so tough that of the 12 opportunities, we really only had a couple like that uh, as we're continuing to figure that out. But I think the competition's been good, as I said earlier, in preparing us for Mid-American Conference play. Zips win that one. Then Gardner Webb comes in, coach, on November 21st. And I think people, Zip fans, took a look at their record and said, hey, how good are they? But you take, take a look at their losses. They lost three really tough games, I think, on a 55-footer before they got to us. Yeah, I mean, their, their record was very misleading. Um, my friend, Coach uh, Holtman, was previously the head coach at Gardner Webb. His assistant, Tim Kraft, is now the head coach there. I called Holt earlier in the day before the game started, and I said, Chris, this will be the last time I play Gardner Webb. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, no, in, in all seriousness, I had a lot of respect, um, obviously, for Tim and, and the preparation and watching them and, and the way they lost a couple last second uh, uh, game, games at the very last second to teams on last second shots. Right before they played us, they got beat on a 45 footer at yeah. Chattanooga, who was 10 and 3 at the buzzer. Uh, they were a lot better uh, than their record, as you said, and they do a great job. Tough to guard, man. Uh, game was in the 90s, and a lot like the Northern Kentucky game, yeah. if you're a basketball fan, was very entertaining offensively. Now it brings us to the St. Bonaventure game up in Cleveland. Great event up there, Coach. Three games, all of them very close, exciting games, and that St. Bonaventure game it was a tough one. Great game. Two good teams, man, going at it. Extremely physical. We had Greg with the blood jersey. We had Mike got hit in the eye, Reek dislocated his finger, we popped it back in. I mean, it was a grinder. Our guys took on the challenge. You know, as we've said here uh, post-game, you know, obviously the difference was second chance points, Joe, yeah. it was, and our missed free throws, quite frankly. I mean, you know, I, we just, we didn't shoot the ball very well from the free throw line, missed multiple one and ones and a one point loss. And, and uh, then the last possession, I didn't like the shot that we were able to manufacture it all. Give St. Bonaventure credit for blowing up the down screen. Uh, but we got to be better there. I got to help our guys a little bit better there. That's on, that's on me. I told Ali that. He'll be in that situation a lot yeah. uh, moving forward. And, uh, but the combination of all those things and then a few untimely turnovers that led to some baskets. Yeah. You know, you, you're, you're looking for something, right, when the margin for error is just sure. like one point. I mean, you're, 
it could have been a possession or two here or there, but a great basketball game between two yeah. very good teams. Yeah, Zips lose that one 62 to 61. As we said right now, as you get ready for the Mid-American Conference play, Akron is eight and four. We're gonna take a break, come back and name our players of the month. Don't wanna miss that. We're back after this timeout. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly. Each week at this time, we're going to name our Players of the Week right now. Since it's the first show, it's our Players of the Month for November. Nobody better than Enrique Freeman. Coach, we've talked about this young guy really a lot here in the last four or five years, but he is a double-double machine. He's our Player of the Month. Great player, great person. Yeah. He's awesome. I uh, love coaching him, trying to soak in every day that I get to be around him here over the next, hopefully, three months. Sure. Right? Um, been a real blessing to our program and, and the way he touches people that are around them, you know, regardless of who they are, uh, just the way he treats people. It's a great lesson for uh, my own kids watching him. I tell them, hey, watch him, watch how he treats people. You know, it's, uh, you know, he's uh, been a real blessing. I know one of the keys we talk about on the radio side, and I always bring it up, how will teams defend Enrique Freeman? Will they bring help from the weak side? Will they play a man up? And I'm sure you take a look at that early also. Yeah, we've seen everything, right, yeah. through 12 games. We've seen single coverage. We've seen traps from ball side, middle of the floor, big on big, designated trappers. I mean, you name it. Yeah. Uh, he certainly demands a lot of attention. And now he gets ready for the Mid-American Conference schedule beginning Tuesday night out in DeKalb. Of course, he will be a marked man all through the Mid-American Conference schedule. Which brings us to our player of the month for December. Nobody better than Ali Ali. Uh, a blessing to get him back, Coach. Oh, awesome, right? And uh, he's really grown a lot. I'm so proud of him. You know, obviously he's played well since he's been back. But his mental toughness to go through what he did to get to the point where we were able to get the uh, waiver. Yeah. And they, they finally, they did the right thing there. But his mental growth, his emotional growth, his personal growth has really been cool uh, to see upon his return. You know, aside from obviously the basketball yeah. part, which he's continued to improve there and grow, and and uh, you know, just great to have him back. Uh, it feels like he almost didn't leave. You know? You're right. Um, so we're uh, we're thrilled that he's back out there. He went on the floor down at Northern Kentucky, made a great pass inside Enrique Freeman. It's like, as you said, Coach, like he's never left, and he comes back with 29 against Gardner Webb, and he's right back playing great basketball. He is, and obviously, he, it's interesting. He has a connection, obviously, with all those guys he came in with. And, uh, and like it's almost seamless. Feels like he didn't uh, hadn't left, as you mentioned. But he and Freeman, in particular, have right. a really special connection of knowing where each other are at all times. It's almost like one knows what the other's doing, you know, at all times. And so, uh, that's pretty cool. Exactly. How much better can he get, Coach? He also is going to be kind of a marked man. People are going to try and defend him. How much do you look for him in the second half of the year? Uh, obviously, they're going to do the same thing as they do with Reek, but the difference is sometimes when you only have one guy of that caliber, it's easier to key, on, right. key in on one guy. You've got him, and I think we've got some other guys emerging as well. You know, I, I keep telling them success is going to look different for different guys on different nights. We just have too much yeah. depth. I mean, right now we're bringing Mike Dawson off the bench who started 10 games and That's averaged right. double figures in an NCAA tournament run. We're bringing Caleb Thornton, who was honorable mention all Mac, and led the league in assist and steals last year off the bench. Shema, who's, who may be off the bench, has about, played about as well as anybody here recently. You're right. A transfer from Wichita State. Like these guys, you know, Tabari Johnson, who started multiple games last year. Those are the guys coming off the bench. You know, so our depth right now has been uh, a real strength of ours. If guys will continue yeah. to buy into the team, which they've done to this point, takes a sacrificial mindset and a real commitment yeah. 
to the we agenda over the me agenda. Exactly. And that's challenging for guys this age. But our guys have done a pretty good job of it. And, um, you know, we're, we're certainly trending in a, in a good direction when it comes to our teamism. As we said, the Zips open up Mid-American Conference play Tuesday night out in DeKalb. We're going to take a break, come back with a scouting report on the Huskies right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Well, each week we're going to give you a scouting report on the upcoming opponent. It's going to be brought to you all season by the Hilton Fairlawn Hotels out in West Market Street in Akron. Tuesday night in DeKalb, tough place to play, Coach. The Huskies coming off a tough loss at Iowa, but everybody I've talked to says this is a vastly improved team. Yeah, they really got off to a great start, yeah. and then they've struggled here in terms of the win-loss column here right. lately, but their strength of schedule, Joe, we talk about ours, uh, I think, going into this game on Tuesday, ours is uh, second or third best in the league. I need to look at the metrics here after St. Bonaventure. But they're at the top. They, they, they played and beat DePaul at DePaul. That's they right. played at Northwestern. They just played at Iowa. Uh, they, they have played a re at Monmouth. And Monmouth, yeah. for those that follow college basketball, know how hard a place that is to play and how good they've been traditionally, especially in the last decade or so. I mean, it, it's... You know, they played a great schedule. Starts with their guard play. Coit yeah. is a dynamic score. Um, and then Nutter offers them a, a, a guy a little bit like Ali does for mm -hmm. us that can post it, drive it, get you on the glass, shoot it. A lot of versatility. And then their bigs, they just have a lot of them. Yeah. And, they, and they're extremely long. So they're two guards, 6'7", Nutter's 6'7", and then sometimes they'll play two bigs at 6'11", 6'10". So to no surprise, they're top five in the country in shot blocks. Okay. So you've got to be intelligent about how you attack them at the basket. And uh, when you always play there, it's always a challenge um, anytime you go on the road. So we've got to be prepared and we've got to be ready. And, and uh, I thought our guys prepared really well for St. Bonaventure. Uh, in our prep mentally, getting ready for that game. We've got to do it again and again and again as we start this, yeah. what I call, 18-round boxing match. Exactly. You know, round one, Tuesday night, DeKalb. Friday night at Iowa, they lost 103-74, uh, to 74, but they're only down by six at the half. They were in yeah, that no, game they, for yeah, a long time. Yeah, they can time. score. Man, they can score. Yeah. Coit can put up big numbers if you let him get going. We know that. We have great respect for them. Rashawn does a good job, gets him to play hard, physical, and so we're uh, – you know, we got to be ready to go. I'll tell you, it's going to be a heck of a game. Then a quick reminder, Friday night, the Zips are home to take on Bowling Green. That'll be a 9 o'clock tip-off. Circle that on your calendar. Friday night, Bowling Green, 9 o'clock tip-off. Coach, great to be back on the TV show again. I know a lot of people follow us all season long, and let's get a win Tuesday yeah, night. Yeah, no, we appreciate everybody following us. Happy New Year. Yes. Right, to everybody. Hope everybody had a great holiday season. And uh, look forward to seeing the jar filled up. Exactly. Friday night national television, Bowling Green. We call it Friday night lights. There you go. Around here. So hopefully we'll see a lot of Zips fans in there on Friday night, 9 o'clock, and uh, hopefully have a great environment and get off to a good start here in week one. There you go. For the coach, John Gross, I'm Joe Dunn. Thanks for watching. See you back here next week. And always remember, go Zips. Thanks for watching. Zips Weekly with John Gross. Sponsored by Bryant Heaty and Cooling and the Hilton Hotels in Akron and Fairlawn. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.